Hi, it's Congresswoman Jan Tchaikovsky, and I'm back with my plans and pans. So I will be going back to Washington this week. Quite possibly, it could be the last week that I'll be there before the election. But we have to see if the very important work that we need to get done gets done. And that is to fund the government to pass the budget resolution, to make sure that all of the money is there to go forward. Well, the Republicans continued last week to offer bills that were absolutely not possible to, to support. We call them full of poison pills, things that I'm sure the Republicans knew that we would not be able to, to vote for. So, Instead, though, of coming together and offering the full payment so that we could be done with the next fiscal year, it is likely what we're going to do is what is called a continuing resolution. We call it for short a CR. The alternative to a continuing resolution would be a shutdown because at the end of this week, we run out of the money. Are we gonna get a shutdown? And so far, the kinds of things that they have offered are not going to pass with Republican votes, even though they have the majority. And we, as the Democrats, are going to have to work with them, and we will, in order to get enough votes to at least have a continuing resolution that will postpone, once again, kick the can down the road, until December. So that is the, uh, the option that we have. I am hoping very much that we will be able to have that continuing resolution and uh, not have a government shutdown, which is a total disaster for the economy and for literally millions and millions of people. So we'll see what happens. This is gonna be a very important week in the Congress. Many times we've talked about the issue of reproductive rights, but recently we've seen women who are dying. I wanted to mention Amber Thurman. Amber was the mother of a six-year-old child. She had taken an abortion pill, but ended up having great complications and was very sick. And she had to wait for 20 hours in agony and near death, waiting for any kind of medical health. Well, it came too late. She died. She died unnecessarily because if she could have gotten the health care that she needed, Amber would be there with her son right now. I saw her parents, her mother on television, weeping because this did not have to happen. Amber asked her mother as she was dying to please, whatever happens, take care of my child. And so we need to make abortion, medical care, available to everyone and not be punished. 20 hours of waiting. And part of the problem is the doctors are fearful of intervening because it can mean not only the loss of their ability to practice medicine, but because they can end up in some places with years and years in jail. This is inhumane. It is not what we used to have when we had Roe v. Wade. And the decision wasn't made by politicians. The decision was made by parents, by women, with their doctors, perhaps with their religious leaders. This, is, this has got to stop. And that's why I am continuing to fight for the ability to get back to reproductive health care and to get rid of this ban. And what the Republicans want to do is to make it a national ban. And the really remarkable thing 
is that the majority of the Republicans, when asked to vote on it, decided to vote against contraception. Contraception. I mean, how far have they gone to intervene in our lives, in your lives, and we have to stop that? And just last week, there was a discussion in the Senate to allow for in vitro fertilization, and the Republicans squelched that bill, would not allow it. Now, when we talk about in vitro fertilization, what do we mean? For people who have tried and tried on their own to have a baby, to have a child, often have to turn to having physicians help them to be able to get pregnant. No, this is what the Republicans in the Senate stopped. Illinois has provided more out-of-state abortions than any other state. And so we have been building more and more clinics to make sure that we can take care of as many people as possible. In my subcommittee in the House of Representatives, we had a hearing about the efficacy of the Federal Trade Commission, an agency, if you ask me, that has done more to help consumers to fight on their behalf than really almost any other agency. It is headed by a young woman named Lena Khan, who is fearless in fighting on behalf of consumers and small businesses. But the Republicans were saying that she somehow has overreached. I couldn't disagree more. For the last 40 years, until very recently, when our Supreme Court changed the rules, there was something called Section 13B of the Federal Trade Commission law. But what does that mean? Section 13B said that if some consumers are defrauded, that money should go directly back to them. Well, so the Supreme Court said, said no. I asked every single member of the Federal Trade Commission, all five of them, Republicans and Democrats, don't you think it would be a good idea to reinstate Section 13B so that if someone is defrauded, that they will get the money back? It makes total sense. All of them said yes. All of them said yes. So it is time for us to make sure that uh, our rules that are supposed to protect consumers are put into place. And that is something that I'm really trying to do. In fact, I introduced a bill along with my colleague, Tony Cardenas, that would require that we reinstate 13B and that you'll get your money back. I was honored this week at a really fun event by the Sports Fans Coalition. They're the fans. They're the people who buy the tickets and go to the games and are, you know, really watching on television and care about sports. Why did I get such an award? Along with my Republican colleague, Gus Bilirakis, because the two of us have introduced a bill called the Ticket Act. The Ticket Act simply says, now some of you have done this, you wanna to go to a sports event, or it could also be a concert, a play, and you think when you go online to do it, to, to get a ticket, that the price you see at first is the price you're gonna pay. But lo and behold, by the time you get to the end of the transaction, you find there's all kinds of hidden fees. Sometimes it's 20, 30, 40, even more sometimes percent higher than you thought and you have to rethink the whole idea. No, the Ticket Act says the price you first see is the price you pay. And so we were able, Gus and I, to pass that bill in the House of Representatives 388 to 24. I don't know who those 24 would have been. I don't know why they'd want to spend money because this says there are not gonna be 
the hidden fees. So let's end that practice and get the ticket act in law. To a lot of my friends, let me say, have a happy Hispanic Heritage Month. We can all celebrate. In Chicago, we had an incredible parade and celebration. It's really a festive time. I'll be back next week, and I'm hoping to see more of my constituents, and I look forward to seeing you. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, where my handle is at Jan Schakowsky.